All right, in a couple of uh, previous videos, I talked about Broadway and uh, its significance uh, for theater culture as a whole in the United States. Uh, I discussed some of the problems affecting Broadway uh, theater culture uh, in the 1970s and uh, responses to the crisis that uh, affected Broadway back then. Uh, and I mentioned that um, while uh, Broadway uh, is a uh, uh, kind of powerful measure of the commercial potential of theater in the United States, uh, that the, the success of Broadway in overcoming its uh, uh, near demise in the 1970s uh, depended on um, uh, significant investment in the public infrastructure to support the Broadway theater culture. I wanted to contrast the situation in the United States uh, with that in, in Europe and uh, other countries uh, to show how, uh, show the differences between our country and mm -hmm. other, um, a kind of public attitude toward theater. In Europe, uh, theater culture receives large subsidies from national and local governments. These governments put uh, the support of theaters and the people who work in them into their budgets as a line item in uh, the total national. So that contrasts largely with uh, the way we do things in the United States, where uh, government money to support theaters comes largely from special taxes uh, levied on particular persons to um, uh, uh, use for support of the arts. That's the tax most often used the arts is the hotel tax. And uh, it's primarily visitors to cities who pay uh, this tax uh, that supports arts programs within the city rather than the taxes coming from the citizens of the city to support the uh, arts within their city. In Europe, it's generally understood that the public as a whole, for the country as a whole, uh, pays taxes into a um, uh, government fund that budgets the uh, spending on um, the arts, including theater. Commercial theater does exist in Europe, uh, in London, largely it's confined to what is called the West End. It's sort of like the Broadway of London. West End theaters uh, produce uh, uh, musicals and uh, expensive shows for affluent audiences, and indeed a number of shows that become big hits on Broadway uh, have their be uh, on the West End in London. In Paris, uh, you have boulevard shows, uh, commercial entertainments, uh, musicals and variety shows, uh, and some of these have um, come to the United States. We'll talk about a couple of them a little later on. Uh, and elsewhere in Europe, uh, you have a theater called Cabaret that uh, uh, functions largely as a commercial endeavor uh, without subsidies from the United States, or without subsidies from the government. But by and large, theaters in Europe survive on large government subsidies and these subsidies have particular advantages. They allow theater artists to experiment with extensive resources and encourage them to take unusual aesthetic risks. Uh, theater in Europe tends to be um, uh, more adventurous in terms of uh, the subject matter of, of uh, plays, in, more adventurous in terms of, of the use of design elements, costuming and lighting and technology. Uh, and uh, they tend also to be more adventurous in terms of scale, doing things on 
doing bigger sh involving bigger sets and bigger concepts uh, because they have they do not depend entirely on audiences to sustain them they have this money from the government and indeed in many theaters uh, less than a third of the money that the theater uh, uses in its budget comes from audiences two-thirds comes from the government subsidies that allows theater artists to do all kinds of things that uh, don't depend on whether audiences approve of them or not. Uh, and that can lead to some very exciting theater. However, when you get large government subsidies, you always get the suspicion that government support uh, leads to some kind of indoctrination. Uh, that's been a big complaint of politicians in the United States against uh, encouraging subsidies for theater. Uh, but the argument that uh, government support leads to indoctrination depends on who the government is, what country, and the circumstances relative to the society in which the government is supporting the theater. Uh, in, for the most part in Europe, uh, even though the government um, is uh, very responsible for sustaining the uh, theater culture, it tends not to interfere in uh, the decisions made by theater artists as far as what they produce and how they do it. Uh, occasionally politicians complain in Europe about uh, the waste of money on uh, productions uh, with which uh, they do not approve, uh, but it has not had the uh, effect of, of any government uh, canceling support for uh, uh, theater uh, culture as a result of, of um, uh, political differences. In recent times with this recession, uh, it's clear that the governments don't have as much money as they uh, formerly had to uh, support all kinds of government programs and subsidies have been reduced and some theaters have had to disappear because they, for whatever reason, uh, were not deemed worthy enough to receive subsidies. Uh, and did not have the audiences uh, to sustain them in government subsidies. But on the whole, uh, it's misleading to assume that because the government is investing heavily in theater, it's involved in somehow shaping the political consciousness of the audiences. That's not to say that any support, uh, that, 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 that the government support is uh, free of political significance. Uh, it, it does have a political significance. The idea that that um, uh, the government somehow controls audiences through its supportive theaters is not altogether persuasive. On the other hand, government support may encourage complacency and excessive institutionalization, and that's been a problem in Europe with many theaters uh, having entrenched personnel and habits of doing things uh, that uh, actually stifle innovation or lead to a kind of fossilized culture uh, that um, <clears throat> is uh, free from um, pressures to change because uh, they can count on uh, support from the government and uh, maintained entrenched ways of doing things or attitudes toward um, uh, political themes or social issues uh, these can become uh, uh, stale or, um, or in some cases lacking some uh, innovative bit. So that's a problem with government support more than the idea of indoctr indoctrination. The United States had been looking at uh, ways of subsidizing the theater and had even done some experimentation with that back in the 1930s uh, with the Works Public Administration and uh, 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 program to fund theaters uh, as a way of uh, helping uh, uh, artists out of the Great Depression. But that program ran into severe controversies with Congress and uh, subsequently the U.S. Congress has been uh, very hesitant to get involved in any cities for the arts. Nevertheless, in 1966, Congress did create the National Endowment for the Arts.
and accepted that the arts contribute significantly to the uniqueness of America's cultural identity. Uh, and they provided a budget for the arts, a very small one. I think the initial budget back in 1966 was $3, really tiny. It's grown uh, uh, quite a bit since then uh, to something like around $100 million, which relative to other components of the national budget is still nevertheless really tiny. Since 1966, however, A has faced one controversy after another in regard to programs that it has subsidized, uh, and these controversies have been intense to a degree unimaginable in Europe. Uh, and we will be discussing these controversies uh, a little later on when we get to uh, especially the 1990s when it was um, uh, quite intense uh, 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 conflict between uh, the government and artists uh, supported by the National Endowment for the Arts. But we'll deal with that later on. Subsidies invariably involve theater and political conflict, and they do impose a political significance performance because they involve the public in theatrical performance as a result of the public's investment through tax revenues in, uh, in theater. And so when we look at how theater gets produced and to what extent it's dependent on the government, uh, we're invariably involved in a, a question of, of the political significance of theater and what is the social significance of the theater, of the play, and of the audience uh, in relation to um, the government that uh, uh, is re uh, in control of the um, economy and uh, the budget at the time we are uh, uh, experiencing theater. Because of all these controversies in the United States, subsidies here uh, now primarily go to large traditional institutions like the Metropolitan Opera and the San Francisco Opera and funding for experiments, experimental kinds of theater and with funding of regional theaters has diminished. Uh, back in the late 1970s when Carter was president uh, and in, uh, somewhat in the 90s um, when uh, Clinton was president, there was some effort to uh, fund uh, regional theaters and maybe in, in, in the name of diversity, theaters that did not have uh, particularly large audiences, but these invariably embroiled the uh, NEA in controversies uh, and subsequently uh, uh, the NEA has, uh, has uh, uh, directed subsidies primarily to very large-scale um, institutions that have considerable fundraising capacity within themselves through um, boards of trustees and, and wealthy patrons, as well as uh, well-paying audiences uh, as uh, uh, the uh, San Francisco Opera and the Metropolitan Opera attract. I should mention uh, Finally, that uh, with the opera, uh, the opera audience grew considerably as the, um, the, the fortunes of the musical declined back in the 70s. And um, that's the ironies of theater history in the United States is that uh, the, the opera audience has uh, become much more vibrant as a result of the crisis in, on Broadway. Uh, and it's much larger now than it has ever been with many theaters setting up uh, quite distinguished opera companies since the 1970s and with the United States being a leader in world opera production. Uh, and yet we must remember that this um, development of opera in the United States did depend heavily on uh, the um, uh, subsidies provided by the NEA and uh, then by subsidies from states, state uh, arts councils, uh, which emulated the model of the NEA. All right, so that's uh, 
a summary of uh, differences between uh, the United States and uh, Europe uh, in brief in regard to uh, the economic uh, foundations uh, for supporting the theater.